Your job is something my elite employees could do with ease. The CEO's voice echoed loudly throughout the factory. For the past 10 years, I had been working desperately for this company. Despite that, the CEO kept making sarcastic remarks to me. I was exhausted by his attitude. I no longer cared what happened. I decided to quit the company, which was tantamount to being fired. My name is Ethan, and I'm 28 years old. After graduating from a technical high school, I started working at a factory of a subcontractor for a major manufacturer. I didn't have anything in particular I wanted to do, so I didn't go to college and just worked without much thought. However, an event occurred that changed my destiny, and I began working desperately. That life-changing event was getting married. I had been dating Catherine for a while, and we got married when I was 24. We were soon blessed with a child. I thought I had to do my best as a husband and father, so I started working hard at my job. Catherine, who was a housewife, would make delicious meals and wait for me, cherishing her growing belly. We spent blissfully happy days that were almost scary. The baby in your belly is a girl. She'll be so cute. I can't wait to meet her. A girl. I won't want to give her away in marriage. You're thinking too far ahead. Catherine smiled at me gently. We believed this happiness would continue forever, but tragedy struck us suddenly. It was sudden. The baby was born safely, but Catherine suddenly passed away after giving birth. Seeing Catherine's transformed appearance, I cried every day. What should I do from now on? Then, the baby started crying loudly. That voice sounded like it was telling me to keep going. I'm the only one who can protect this child. I decided to do my best for her sake. I named the baby Olivia, taking part of Catherine's name. I decided to leave Olivia with my mother while I worked, and she took care of Olivia without a single complaint. For this child's sake, don't overdo it. You're the only parent she has. My mother always said that and happily took care of Olivia. Weekdays were busy with work, and I often worked from early morning until late at night. Because of that, it was difficult to secure time to play with Olivia, but I used my days off for her. It was my first time raising a child, but Olivia's growth brought me immense joy. Four years passed, and Olivia entered kindergarten. Her atmosphere and appearance somewhat resembled Catherine's. It was as if I was seeing Catherine through Olivia. I started going to work at the factory after dropping Olivia off at kindergarten. I couldn't make it in time to pick her up, so I relied on my mother's help but I was very happy to have time to be involved with Olivia, even if just a little. Daddy, I want to go to the amusement park next time. The amusement park? That sounds great. Let's go next Saturday. Hearing my words, Olivia looked happy. Yay. I love you, Daddy. Saying that, Olivia went inside the kindergarten building. I was grinning. Happy to hear Olivia say she loved me. I wonder how many more times I'll get to hear it. Thinking that, I arrived at the factory for work, and my colleague William approached me. Did something good happen? You're grinning. Well, actually, my daughter said she loves me. For some reason, it made me happy. William looked at me with a smile. Daughters are adorable. Olivia must have gotten big. Let's have a barbecue again sometime. My wife was saying she wanted to see Olivia too. She's already four years old. Kids grow up fast, huh? A barbecue sounds great. Olivia will be thrilled. William joined the company at the same time as me, and we get along well in our private lives too. William entered the company after graduating college, so he's four years older than me, but he understands my family situation and is a really good work colleague. Let's work hard again today. With that thought, I went to my workstation. My job is to assemble parts sent from headquarters into products. When you think of factory work, you might imagine simple tasks, but it actually requires accuracy and speed in the work, so it's mentally taxing. I've been working at this factory for 10 years, and I've finally become able to work efficiently. Thanks to that, I can finish work on time and go home, so I can spend that time with Olivia. As I was working as usual, I heard a loud voice coming from the factory entrance. Everyone, pay attention. There's someone I want to introduce. It was the factory manager's voice. The factory manager looked somewhat tense. Next to the factory manager stood a young man in a suit. That man was looking at us with sharp eyes, giving off a somewhat scary impression. My colleagues and I stood around the factory manager. 
This is Mr. Johnson, who has become the new CEO of the headquarters starting today. Mr. Johnson is the son of the former CEO and is famous for being very skilled at his job. I was surprised by the sudden change in CEO. Everyone else also started looking at Mr. Johnson upon hearing the factory manager's words. What kind of person could he be? As I was thinking that, he said something surprising. I heard this factory has a lot of high school graduates. Is that true? I despise incompetent high school graduates. High school graduates are incompetent. How rude of him to say that. Those aren't words you say to employees you just met. As I stood there dumbfounded, Mr. Johnson continued saying unbelievable things. Now that I'm the CEO, I'm gonna make this company a gathering of elites. Incompetent high school graduates better be prepared. I'll fire you one by one. The factory was in an uproar at these words. Many of my colleagues working at the factory are high school graduates like me, or graduated from vocational schools. Everyone's faces turned pale all at once. If I get fired too, it'll be difficult to support Olivia. My body trembled with fear, and the factory manager started panicking. Mr. Johnson, firing them will be a problem. Even the middle school and high school graduate employees have contributed to this factory, so if they are gone, this factory won't be able to function. The factory manager desperately tried to persuade Mr. Johnson, but he laughed. I'll gradually bring elites into this factory so you don't run out of personnel, so don't worry. I see. The factory manager seemed exasperated and at a loss for words. Mr. Johnson, having said his piece, seemed satisfied and left the factory. What a mess this has become. If we get fired one by one like Mr. Johnson said, what will happen to Olivia and me? I'm not the only one feeling anxious. The factory has fallen into a panic. Some of my agitated colleagues crowded around the factory manager, but the factory manager tried to reassure us, saying powerfully, don't worry. As long as I'm the manager of this factory, I won't let Mr. Johnson fire you. You've all worked desperately at this factory until today. Like hell I'd let him fire you. My colleagues and I were relieved to hear those words, but an incident occurred that made us realize things wouldn't go so smoothly. One morning, when I went to work as usual, the factory manager was nowhere to be seen. Instead, there was an unfamiliar man in the office. When I greeted him without knowing anything, the man looked me up and down and laughed through his nose. I'm the new factory manager starting today. I couldn't believe my ears. Huh? Um. As I was confused, the man laughed even more and said that good-for-nothing factory manager got transferred to a different factory. Well, he was truly incompetent, so it's for the best. The factory manager got transferred. The factory manager isn't good for nothing. He's a kind person who puts the employees first. I went to my workstation in disbelief, and William also came over to me with a perplexed expression. Did you hear? I can believe the factory manager got transferred. What's gonna happen to this factory? Yeah, I was shocked when I heard too. It seemed like we weren't the only ones who were confused, as the factory was in an uproar. Then, Unfamiliar men started entering the factory one after another, with a new factory manager, Mr. Miller. Starting today, elite employees dispatched from headquarters on Mr. Johnson's orders will be working with you. If the elite employees say you're incompetent, you're fired. Work your asses off. Calling your subordinates elite employees is ridiculous. And can employees who've never worked in a factory handle this job? I couldn't help but wonder. But as long as I was gonna work here, I had no choice but to take it seriously. If I got fired here, Olivia and I would end up on the streets. That was the one thing I wanted to avoid. As I was working, I heard a loud voice from the elite employee next to me. Old man, how many minutes does it take you to make one product? For this product, the key is to be thorough. If you don't do it carefully one by one, it won't work. That's not true. Let me see it. The elite employee snatched a product from Mr. Rollins and started assembling it. His speed was extraordinarily fast, but it collapsed partway through. See, that's why I told you. Mr. Rollins said that and started reassembling a product the elite employee had put together. The elite employee watched with a frustrated look. It's not just about assembling it quickly. Hearing Mr. Rollins' words, the elite employee's face turned beet red. Old man. You're a middle school graduate, right? 
I'm an elite who graduated from a famous university. I'll go to the CEO and have incompetent folks like you fired. What in the world was this person saying? Mr. Rollins has served this company longer than I have. He knows more about the products than anyone else. But Mr. Rollins was unfazed. If you think I'm useless, feel free to do as you wish. The elite employee, further angered by Mr. Rollins' words, left in a huff. I involuntarily called out to Mr. Rollins. Was it okay to say something like that? Mr. Rollins smiled and said, I'm already old. I don't mind getting fired. Besides, I don't want to work under people like that. You have excellent skills too, so you should find a new workplace soon. I thought he had a point. You can judge whether someone can do a job or not based on their educational background. And threatening to fire subordinates at the drop of a hat is unbelievable. But I probably wouldn't be able to find a new workplace right away. For now, if I could just get through today, tomorrow would be Saturday. Feeling uneasy, I continued working while looking forward to Saturday. When it was time to leave, I started getting ready to go home. But then, Mr. Miller called out to me. You're coming into work tomorrow. What? I was at a loss for words. I had promised Olivia that we'd go to the amusement park tomorrow. It's only natural for a high school graduate to work on Saturdays, isn't it? With all due respect, I've finished all my work. Even if I come in tomorrow, I don't think there'll be anything to do. Mr. Miller's face gradually turned angry. There's plenty to do, like cleaning and odd jobs, right? High school graduates should work for free. He's telling me to cancel important plans for cleaning and odd jobs. And working for free is unbelievable. I have important plans with my family tomorrow. If it's not urgent, I'd like to take the day off tomorrow. I had inadvertently argued back against Mr. Miller. I had never argued with a superior before, but this time I couldn't stand it. But after I said it, I came to my senses and looked at Mr. Miller, and I could see his face contorted with anger. I knew it was too late, but it was already too late. Mr. Miller glared at me and said, You are defying your superior. Who do you think you are? You think you are so great that you can go against your superior. I was speechless. I thought it was only a matter of time before I'd be fired at this rate. I desperately suppressed my anger and said in a trembling voice, I'm very sorry. I'll come into work tomorrow. I was filled with frustration, but it couldn't be helped. When I got home and apologized to Olivia with a guilty conscience, Olivia looked sad but said, it can't be helped since it's work. Let's definitely go another time. She's only four years old, but she's so kind and considerate to understand. But Olivia's expression looked a bit lonely. I felt so incompetent for making Olivia feel this way. From then on, odd jobs and such increased without any change in salary, and coming in on Saturdays also increased. Mr. Miller and the other elite employees' attitudes didn't change, and they continued to look down on middle school and high school graduate employees. Until now, going to the company wasn't painful, but ever since the new CEO took over, going to the company had become unbearable for me. Then one day, another incident occurred. When I went to work with heavy footsteps, Mr. Rollins, who sat next to me, was organizing his desk. Wondering about it, I casually called out to Mr. Rollins, Mr. Rollins, it's amazing that you're tidying up first thing in the morning. Then, Mr. Rollins looked at me with a sad expression. Actually, Mr. Miller finally gave me my walking papers this morning. What? I couldn't believe my ears. Mr. Rollins got fired. I always thought I'd get fired someday, but when it actually happens, it's sad. Even though I've served this company for 45 years, William, who happened to be near me, also had a surprised look on his face. I can believe Mr. Rollins got fired. Isn't there some mistake? No, I was the only middle school graduate in this factory. They probably had their eye on me. It's sad, but I'm old, so maybe it can't be helped. Looking at Mr. Rollins' face, I was overcome with the urge to do something. Mr. Rollins, you should be a necessary part of this factory. I'll talk to Mr. Miller. Hearing my words, Mr. Rollins and William desperately tried to stop me. Don't do it. Never mind about me. If you argue with Mr. Miller now, you'll get fired too. If you get fired, that'll be the end of this factory. But I have reached my limit. Brushing off their attempts to stop me, I hurried to the office. Mr. Rollins and William hurriedly followed after me. When I forcefully opened the office door, 
Mr. Johnson and factory manager Miller were there. Mr. Johnson had come from headquarters for an inspection today. The two of them looked at my face and grinned. It was a disgusting smile. What is it? Does the incompetent high school graduate have some business with me? Mr. Miller spoke while looking me up and down condescendingly. I immediately raised my voice. Please retract Mr. Rollins' termination. Mr. Rollins has worked solely at this company for 45 years. Then, Mr. Johnson glared at me. Are you dissatisfied with my personnel decision? I think it'll be a problem if Mr. Rollins leaves the factory because he knows more about the products than anyone else. When I said that, Mr. Johnson started laughing. Just because one old middle school graduate is gone, my company won't be affected in the slightest. Or what? You want to get fired too? Sounds good. Let's fire Ethan too. There they go again. These people immediately bring up firing at the slightest thing. I continued working, sacrificing my time with Olivia, but I had reached my limit. As I stood there dumbfounded, William, unable to stand it anymore, spoke up. Sir, if you fire Ethan, this factory will cease to function. Both Mr. Johnson and Mr. Miller started laughing. My elites can easily do Ethan's job. So Ethan, you are fired too. I sighed. Mr. Rollins and William were also looking at the two with unbelievable expressions. Is that okay with you? What are you talking about? Of course it's okay. I'm even happy about it. Now there'll be fewer incompetent people. Never come back here again. Take all your belongings and get out. The two were loudly shouting, looking happy. Until recently, I had been working nervously, worried about what would happen if I got fired, but now I had no regrets even if I did get fired. I'm glad to be able to quit a company like this. I no longer cared what happened to this company. I fought that from the bottom of my heart. Are you really quitting? As I was cleaning up my desk, William looked at me with disbelief. It's the CEO's orders, so it can't be helped. When I said that, William sighed. I guess this factory is finished without you here. Maybe I should look for a new job too. Saying that, William saw me off to outside the factory. And so, I left a factory I had been indebted to for a long time. What should I do from now on? I thought about my future with Olivia as I walked. For now, I wanted to go home and give Olivia a big hug. With that thought, I headed home. When I got home, Olivia hugged me first. I had told my mother on the phone that I had gotten fired from the company, so she probably subtly told Olivia too. Olivia was trying to cheer me up. Daddy, good work at your job. Thank you for always working so hard. I gave Olivia, who was considerate of me despite being small, a big hug. Thank you, Olivia. I'm gonna do my best. I decided to do my best at a new workplace for Olivia's sake too. The next day, I was having a relaxed morning for the first time in a while. But when I left the house to take Olivia to kindergarten, my smartphone rang. Who could it be at this early hour? I looked at my smartphone screen and was shocked. It was from the factory I had been working at. It was strange to get a call from the factory after being fired. I ignored it. As I was slowly walking hand in hand with Olivia to the kindergarten, my smartphone rang again and kept ringing endlessly. What in the world could it be? Olivia also had a worried look on her face. Daddy, the phone keeps ringing. Is it okay not to answer? It's a call that has nothing to do with me, so it's fine not to answer. I sighed. Olivia waved at me and went inside the kindergarten. Well then, should I go to a certain place? I returned home, got ready, and was about to head to a certain place. But when I left the house, I saw an unfamiliar car parked in front of the house. I was shocked when I looked at the driver's seat. Mr. Johnson was there. I knew all too well why Mr. Johnson was here. I tried to walk past the car quickly with my head down. But Mr. Johnson got out of the car and called out to me loudly. Hey, wait a minute. I knew Mr. Johnson was talking to me but I didn't stop walking. But he kept talking to me without giving up. Please just listen to me. He was speaking so loudly that people walking on the street were turning around to look at us. I had no choice but to stop, and when I looked at Mr. Johnson, he looked like he was about to cry. What in the world is going on? When I spoke to Mr. Johnson insincerely, he started speaking in an agitated tone. Right after you quit the company, the important screw we had been using for products was suspended from shipment. We can't make our products without that screw. When I checked with the shipping source, 
They said they can't ship it without your permission. Please, can't you give permission? It seemed like the factory was in a panic because they couldn't assemble products without the screw. Of course I refuse. Why should I give permission to use the screw I developed for a company that fired me? Isn't that too convenient for you? I didn't know anything about it. If I had known, I wouldn't have fired you. You can come back to our company, so please approve the use of the screw. I let out a big sigh. Yes, the screw used in the factories was a special screw I had created. With conventional screws, installation took time and was inefficient. If it's inefficient, it takes longer to make one product. Wondering if there was any way to make a more efficient screw, I thought that if I could, over time would decrease and I'd have more time to spend with Olivia. With that in mind, I had been working on developing a new screw at home on my days off and after work. And a year later, I succeeded in developing a groundbreaking screw. The new screw could be installed in half the time of conventional screws. Also, it was an amazing screw that was very sturdy despite being small, so it could be used in any product. When I showed the screw to the previous factory manager and explained it, he was surprised but happy and advised me to apply for a patent. I followed that advice and applied for a patent, and the patent for that screw became mine. The product shipped from the factory started using the screw I developed, and even the headquarters appreciated how amazing the screw was. Thanks to my screw, we became able to make more advanced products, and it became a patented technology with an economic effect of $2 billion. I had hoped that this screw would further develop the factory and contribute to the company, but I was suddenly given my walking papers by the CEO. I couldn't hand over this patented technology of mine to a company that judged people based on academic background and fired excellent employees. With that in mind, on the day I was fired, I contacted the factory that made my screws and asked them to suspend shipment. Of course, even Mr. Johnson couldn't use the screws without my permission. That's probably why he came to ask me directly this time. As I remained silent, he spoke to me as if pleading. You can come back to the company starting today. If you do, I'll promote you. If you want to work at headquarters, I'll transfer you there, so please. Huh? This person is always looking down on others. I don't want to work under Mr. Johnson anymore. I appreciate your words, but I won't be returning to your company. What? If you come back, I'll promote you and give you a raise. I heard you're a single parent. If you get a raise, your child can live more comfortably, right? I could only let out a big sigh. No matter how much I get promoted or get a raise, there's no future working under Mr. Johnson who judges people based on academic background. I knew that all too well. And I have. I'm sorry. It's impossible because I've already decided on the next company I'll be working for. What? No way. Mr. Johnson had a look of disbelief. There's no way you could find a job so quickly. Don't try to act tough and just come back to my company. No, it's true. I've decided to work in the manufacturing division of a company that does business with your company. If you don't believe me, try calling and asking. What? Could it be that major manufacturer? No way. By the way, I've decided to transfer the patent for my screw to that company, so it's pointless no matter how much you ask me for permission to use the screw. When I said that, his face turned pale. Well then, I have an interview at that company now, so if you'll excuse me. Saying that, I started walking toward the station. Mr. Johnson didn't chase after me anymore and just sat down on the spot. Yes, on the day I was given my walking papers, I had also contacted the major manufacturer that our products were shipped to. It was because I thought that if I quit the factory, the screw couldn't be used and it would cause trouble for the major manufacturer. When I apologized, the CEO of the major manufacturer came on the phone and said something surprising to me. Your screw technology is amazing. I was just thinking of establishing a new factory. If it's all right with you, would you be willing to work as a manager of the manufacturing division at that factory? I was surprised by the dreamlike offer, but I thought my future would be secure if I worked at a major manufacturer, so I immediately agreed. It was decided that I would work at the major manufacturer, and I made up my mind to transfer the patent for the screw to that company. No matter how amazing the technology is, it's meaningless if it's not used. I thought it would be ideal if my screw could be used in many products of the major manufacturer. After that, 
I started working as a manager at the newly established factory of the major manufacturer. Although I'm busy every day, there's no working on holidays or overtime, so I can spend plenty of time with Olivia. Furthermore, my salary has more than doubled compared to before, and my future is secure. The employees working at the factory don't judge me based on my academic background. The atmosphere in the factory is harmonious, and it's always lively. I'm truly glad from the bottom of my heart that I changed jobs to here. Then one day, Mr. Johnson suddenly appeared at my factory with an agitated look on his face. As soon as he entered the factory, he shouted loudly, Hey, what do you mean by stopping business with my company? The CEO's voice echoed throughout the factory. Although surprised by Mr. Johnson's sudden appearance, I replied, I'm sorry, but I can't help you even if you say that to me. Wasn't it decided by those above you? But he wouldn't back down. If we lose our business with your company, my company will go bankrupt. Can't you propose to those above to resume business? He was desperate. His company is a complete subcontractor to this major manufacturer, so it would probably go under without business. Now that this factory has been established, your company isn't needed anymore, right? When I said that one thing, Mr. Johnson turned pale and apologized me. I was in the wrong until now. So please stop this harassment. I'm begging you. Harassment. This person is truly stupid. I'm not harassing you. This company is also thinking of various ways to make a profit, just like you. Besides, you were the one who harassed me first, right? If you hadn't harassed me, this wouldn't have happened. Ack, yes. As I let out a big sigh, I heard a voice from behind me. Mr. Johnson, please don't come to a place like this. It's disgraceful. What are you thinking? Apologizing to Ethan, who you look down on as an incompetent high school graduate. You're making me feel sick, so hurry up and go home. William and Mr. Rollins called out to Mr. Johnson. Mr. Johnson muttered in surprise, What? What are you guys here? Actually, as soon as it was decided that I would be re-employed at this company, I had called William and Mr. Rollins to this factory. It was because I thought Mr. Johnson's company probably wouldn't last long. And I also thought that if William and Mr. Rollins were here, I could work happily like before. My thinking was spot on, and thanks to them, every day is fun. I'm truly a lucky man to be able to work at my current company. Mr. Johnson, you call me a middle school graduate, but academic background has nothing to do with skills. You should quickly realize that way of thinking is what strangled you. Hearing Mr. Rollins' words, Johnson started crying pathetically out loud on the spot. I was surprised that a day like this would come, but it's Johnson's own fault. After that, my company officially stopped doing business with Johnson's company. As a result, his company was forced into bankruptcy, but this was all brought about by his past actions. He is apparently desperately running around trying to rebuild his company even now, but it's clear that the same thing will happen again if he doesn't change that way of thinking. Mr. Miller and the elite employees who had worked with me were desperately looking for new jobs and had come to my company for interviews, but the human resources department, who had heard from me that they weren't very good employees, didn't hire them. I thought the nightmare would start again if they ended up working at my company, but now I can rest easy. I sincerely hope that from now on, they will live without causing trouble for others. Daddy, I want to ride that next. Okay, let's go. I'm at the amusement park with Olivia. Olivia looks very happy when she's with me. I want to continue working hard at my job and protect Olivia's smile.